Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Skills Future Festival X Smart Nation 2022 webinar series organized by Skills Future Singapore and Smart Nation Office. Today's webinar, entitled Open Source Learning for Career Acceleration, is organized in partnership with SG Tech and Red Hat. I'm Celestine, and I'll be your host for this session. Today, we'll find out more about open source technologies and the available career opportunities, followed by a Q&A to wrap up the session. During the webinar, please feel free to type in your questions using the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. The speaker will address them accordingly. Without further ado, let's welcome Vikram Motiani, Senior Director, Customer Success, Commercial Segment, Training and Certification, APEC, and Harish Pillay, Head of Community Architect and Leadership of Red Hat Asia Pacific. Speakers, please. Thanks a lot for the great introduction and uh, glad to be here today with all of you. And it's a great opportunity to talk about careers because that's what we focus on. And uh, today, Harish will be joining me and we will be jointly having a good conversation with you all. But before we proceed, Harish, I mean, we have always uh, spoken to people uh, many times face to face, of course, and uh, we look at the audience and it's fun to talk to them looking at, you know, what is the demographics? So what do you think the demographic is today with the uh, listeners and participants? <laughs> yeah, I think this is one of the challenges that we have, right? So in order to remove the mystery, can we then do this? Can we have a quick poll as to where the background of the individuals who are participating in this session today? So uh, there you go. The polls are there. So perhaps if you could just uh, click on the answers and uh, what, uh, there are no right or wrong answers, it's whatever your answers may be. And then we can then take it up from there and move forward. So I'll give you about 30 seconds uh, to a minute to get this uh, thing done. In the meantime, while the poll is going on, so Vikram, I think it's going to be uh, you know, good to be able to assess who we are talking to. Because I think one of the things that uh, you know, webinars uh, uh, need to also be aware of, and there are people from different walks of life, different types, different parts of their career. And so I think what we would like to do from a Red Hat point of view and is to be able to speak uh, with you uh, and to show you what we can uh, probably offer and how Red Hat as an organization, as the philosophy and the technology behind open source can help your career as well. Is there anything else you want to add to that, Vikram? No, Arish, that's well said. I think it's great to see participation and uh, it will be interesting to see, you know, what is the demographics here. Uh, I'm sure people are coming from various different industries, various different uh, institutes, and uh, yeah. it'll be good to see who we are talking to. Yeah, there is actually uh, uh, five questions in this poll. Um, yeah, and I'll just read it out just so that, you know, you can hear it for yourself as well. Um, why are you attending this webinar? You know, there's, you know, you want to change your career, you want to look for upskilling, reskilling. Uh, what are the, uh, what's this, what's in this talk for you? What is this for you? Or, you know, what are you going to get out of it? Um, learning more about open source and Red Hat, uh, interested in jobs and Red Hat, and any other uh, things that, you know, we, we don't know what that will be, but if you hit, click on others, that means you want to look at more, uh, more things as well from us. Um, the third question is, um, have you used any open source products or solutions? So, you know, I would love to hear and see what the responses are going to be like. Um, and how many years have you been in any of any IT roles? Uh, you know, is it less than two years, two to five years, uh, greater than five years? I have no experience at all and never had an IT role. I uh, just want to understand the audience so that we can then target accordingly. And the last one is about uh, what kind of roles are you interested in? A developer, it's an admin or an architect or any others in, in that uh, field. So let's let's see. So how are the votes going? Um, do we have uh, how many people have voted already? Let's see. We're waiting for the results. Uh, okay, looks like the voting is done. And uh, where are the results? I uh, don't see the results yet. Uh, The organizers, can you just point us to the results yet? Okay. All right. We are seeing the results. So excellent. So thank you very much, all of you, for voting. Um, so the first question was, um, why are you attending this webinar, right? You are looking for upskilling. I think that's very important. Very, very uh, interesting. Uh, upskilling, career change, and reskilling. Okay, excellent. Uh, the second one is, um, uh, what is this in talk for you? To know more, more about open source and Red Hat. 
fantastic. I think we are you are the right place to get everything that you need to know about Red Hat and open source. And the third question is, um, uh, have you used any open source products before? Wow, 27% says you've never heard of open source. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Let's make sure you understand what open source is all about, all right? Um, heard of, but never used any. Okay, let's put a miss, uh, it will rest that myth uh, uh, in, in a bit. And I think I've used it. Okay, excellent. Um, how many years of experience? Uh, less than two years, 36%. So quite a large percentage, uh, uh, you know, less than uh, two years of experience in industry and 45% have no experience in the industry at all. So as you are looking to change in and come into this industry. So that's actually quite interesting. So I think Vikram, we, we have to adjust our uh, presentation with that in mind. And the last one is what roles are you interested in or developers, admin, you know, again, others. Yeah, others is a kind of big field, but uh, unfortunately there's no option for us to, for you to type in a, <laughs> a, a role that you're looking at. But anyway, that's good to know. Developers are 41%. So perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so with that, um, why don't I go ahead and start the session and so that uh, we can then pick it up from there. So let me share my screen. Uh, let me just get my screen up. And while you bring that up, Harish, it is yeah. uh, great to see that 91% said they are interested in open source and Red Hat, which are, in my opinion, synonyms. So, yeah. so that's the perfect place to start. Exactly. I think that's fantastic. Right. Okay. So I am, uh, let me just get into my slideshow. There you go. All right, perfect. So thank you very much, uh, all of you for attending the session today and, and also for responding to the Q&A and, and, and the poll, because I think they, it sets the tone for us. It helps us to, to usefully adjust our material so that you are able to benefit from the session. You're gonna spend about one and a half to two hours with us. So we wanna make sure it is useful uh, to do so. So uh, what about uh, what is this about open unlocking your potential? Um, so we keep hearing the word open. So what is it all about? What is open all about? Um, what I would like to do is, uh, given the fact that it is lunchtime now, okay, so let's talk about food. I know I'm, 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 my, my stomach is growling a little bit, but, uh, you know, uh, let's talk about food. But let's specifically talk about baking and sort of food alone, specifically about baking. And... I'm sure most of you have realized that over the last two and a half years, which what we call the pandemic, baking became the thing to do. Everybody was talking about baking this, baking that at home because there was nothing else they can do. They can go anywhere. And so that was the essential role that was being done by a lot of people uh, over the last two and a half years. I'm sure some of you attending this session today have also done the same thing. So it, it's, it's a, it's a, it seems to be a universal thing because it was reported in papers all over the place, right? So this is uh, someone trying to relie relieve stress, stress by baking, <laughs> by, by kneading uh, bread and what have you. So this is fantastic. I think it, it works well because people uh, you know, found that to be a kind of a sense of relief. But more importantly, when you want to do baking, you want to do cooking, whatever you need to do, what do you need? What are the key things that you require to make that happen? You need ingredients, you need a recipe. So. Baking, therefore, is a wonderful uh, example of what open source is all about. Okay, this is actually a, a remarkably simple analogy and it works extremely well in many places. So here you have two options that you see on your screen. Option number one is, you know, a bunch of cookies that you have that you want to, uh, you know, make available or make for yourself. And you know you need to have some eggs, some sugar, some butter, some margarine, and some other batter, and so on and so forth. And you need to bake it in a you need an oven. You need to put different temperatures and so on to make sure it comes out well. You can do that for yourself, or you can go buy one. You can go and buy it from a store if you're going to buy it from a store. But let's turn this around a slightly different way. Let's say you have been baking the last two and a half years, and your your cookies that you bake have been fantastic and people are raving about it. Your neighbors are so happy when you, they know you're baking because you can get the smell coming out of your house. So fantastic. People come and knock your door. Can we get some of your cookies? But if you were to give and sell or whatever that you do of the cookies, they are enjoying it. They, are, they, they say, hey, Arish, can you please uh, share with me the recipe that you, you use to, to make these wonderful cookies? Sure, you can do that. You can make it available to them. Or 
the problem there would be the the there's only be a one on one session with your friends your whoever comes to your house or to your little uh, kitchen to you know get the cookies from you but what if you could bundle all of these things into a package and in order to sell something in a box of cookies for example a typical model when you want to sell anything from a safety perspective right you would want to print, uh, print out and make uh, attach to the uh, to the to your packaging the recipe what went into it you do not necessarily say what was the measurement you know exactly how many you would say 220 grams and so on but you, when you actually did it it may be more it may be less doesn't matter but the thing is this is what you said this is roughly what goes into it so your recipe is there it works because now somebody takes that say hey i like your recipe i like your cookies it takes a recipe and tries to make it for themselves fantastic let them let them do that now this idea of sharing the recipe is what uh, open source is all about this is what open is all about every recipe on the planet is available for anybody to innovate upon you are empowering your customers in this case your customers could be your neighbor it could be your friend it could be you know you're running a business now you're going to make your recipe available and yet you find people even though you print the recipe on the box you say these are the ingredients that goes into it they still come back to you to buy a fresh set of cookies they could have done it themselves but they found that there is value in coming back to you to get the cookies done as per your recipe why would people do that because in on one hand they feel that there's value you're giving to them but on the other hand they say hey, you know what i can do this myself now i can take your recipe and i can innovate upon it i can now make it a little bit better maybe a bit different slightly bigger slightly smaller i made some uh, uh chocolate uh, whatever toppings on it or whatever you want to add to it you can now innovate and you can build on it so in what has happened is i've empowered my customers to improve on what i have done i can also extend invitation to others to help hey guys you know uh, we have this community kitchen let's uh, bake the things together so each person does a slightly different variation but we share the modifications with each of us and so this way you grow the ecosystem of different types of cookies and this therefore opens the door for all kinds of innovation to happen okay there may be a cookie milkshake that could be a cookie in a cake there's cookie ice cream there are so many of these variations that come which i may not have thought of i can only make cookies but all the others can do so and so now you innovate and move the uh, entire needle forward and the important thing here is is when you have something that has got accountability built in that means i make this i bake this and i provide it to you uh, whether i you paid for it or otherwise i am answerable to you what if you fall sick by eating my cookie or i have a stomach uh, you know uh, uh, issues and, and a food poisoning or that i am answerable to you because i baked it and gave it to you and that's the value that you bring to the to the ecosystem by being accountable for what you create so what we are talking about here is in from an open source perspective is you can use the software to do whatever you want it to do assuming you can do it okay not all software is workable some of them are not workable but whatever it is if you want to use it for video editing you want to use it for sending a Uh, creating a document you want to edit a photograph you want to write a story you can use any software that is relevant for that particular task and 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 use it so you can use it you can view it how do i view it what do i mean by view in this case if you say you know i i like the way this particular tool that does the video recording for me but i want to change some stuff within it i want to make something interesting happen in the video now if you know software you know coding you can have a look at the source code and go fix it for yourself or in, in, uh, improve upon it it's just like the recipe you can see my recipe you can improve on my recipe by saying hey harish i want to add some other nuggets into this little recipe of a uh, cookie recipe that i am proposing and, and i'm give, providing to people so software when you have access to a source code you now are empowered to do so now it doesn't mean that you have to do it as in the you the individual it could be i you can now go find somebody who can add some additional value to it and modify it so once you change something you modify it the idea here is please share your modification with us because you know you benefited from the fact that i shared with you and now you share back with us what are your changes and improvements you have done so together we move forward 
So these are the four stances that we talk about from when we talk about open source software, open source hardware, open data, the whole bunch of open whatever, right? So the idea of a cookie in this case is, you know, you if specifically drawing back to the cookies, right? Uh, you are free to use, modify, and share this recipe with anybody. That's entirely fine because, hey, you can add stuff to it. But what I'm asking back from you is, please uh, agree to uh, bake the cookies in compliance with our, your safety requirements. If, let's say, you don't, uh, you know, make sure your, 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 your oven is clean and all that, and that, you know, there are some stuff that happens and someone uh, uh, you, you provide the cookies to falls sick, just because the recipe is mine, that doesn't mean I'm answerable to that person because the person fell sick. It, you have to make sure you, it's, you know, all those necessary hygiene factors are taken care of. Uh, please also share your improvements, your modification with the rest of the other bakers, which, because, hey, this is kind of fun because everybody wants to add something to it. Um, and you, what you want to do is if you did something, you have to hold yourself accountable to that something that you just did. Uh, you can't pull in everybody into this equation because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is to build an ecosystem of positive, uh, supporting positive stuff. There will always, software by definition will break. That's how software is. Every piece of software will break at some point. But how do I fix the break? In order to fix the break, the breakage, the, the, the issues that popped up, we need to find ways to make sure that I can inspect what happened I have some way to do some kind of forensics to figure out, oh, this is what happened. And this is how I can go fix it. If I have access to the source code, it's a so much better and smoother process to make this happen. Okay. So in software, we have what we call four freedoms. Uh, this is something that uh, was introduced by a gentleman by the name of Richard Stallman in 1985. So it goes back a long time. So it's nothing really very new or happened in the last 10 years, it's since 1985. So he said that we have to, for all software to be useful for humanity. He didn't put it that way, but I'm adding no humanity into the equation. The software that you are, are making available, you should be able to use it to, for whatever you want to use it for, for whatever purpose, as long as you can run, if it runs, right? And if it doesn't run, or if it runs and you want to understand how does it work, and you should be able to study the insights of it. You should be able to open it up and have a look at it. Uh, it's just like you're a cookie, right? There, are, if you can, if I don't give you the recipe, some people will be able to bite on something and say, you know what? I know it's got a little bit of turmeric in it. It's got a little bit of salt in it. It's got a bit of pepper in it. They can tell quite quite well because they are very good cooks. But the average person may not be able to tell you that. So if you have the uh, opportunity to share what it is that you have built, open it up, and so people can have a look at it. It's so much better in terms of uh, making sure that uh, uh, people can you know, inspect and see what's inside, especially in today's context. And I'll just highlight one small bit is when you talk about AI and all those things from an open source point of view is very critical because I need to know what, how did that AI system make the decision that was made? So transparency and all that will come into the uh, uh, freedom number one, which is about the freedom to study how the program works. Now, in the case of uh, open source software, we have two other freedoms as well, freedom two and freedom three. The idea here is when you write something and we encourage you to share with the rest others as well, because by sharing, you grow the market, uh, to grow the opportunity, to grow the learning, grow the uh, type of individuals who can benefit from it as well. And the last bit is about distributing your free, uh, whatever you have modified. Because again, by distributing, you are growing the whole knowledge base. Um, humanity didn't reach where we are today if we did not open up everything from the very beginning. So books, hand, uh, written stuff, clay tablets, writings on the walls, in the caves. These are all pictures and stuff that is kind of handed on generation after generation. Thousands of years, you can still read the uh, stuff on the uh, cave walls. So the ability to transmit knowledge is the best way for us to sustain our, uh, the, the, the human society as well as businesses and the economy uh, for everybody. So these are the four freedoms, freedom zero, one, two, and three. So keep that in mind uh, when you are looking at uh, open source software. This is the, the baseline for all of us. So let me just then uh, switch a little bit to life at Red Hat. So Red Hat, as, as you can see behind me, the, my, my slide, my, my, my backdrop says uh, default to open. 
that's really how Red Hat does what we do. Uh, we default to open because we recognize and we have become successful because of the fact that we our source code is available to anybody to do whatever they want with it. And if they want official support, they want accountability, then they have a contractual agreement with us. So this way, we are growing a whole ecosystem of people who are able to collaborate openly. Um, and uh, you know, great ideas can come from anyone. Uh, the title of the person's uh, job, as it were, does not mean that is the person with the, with the best ideas. It can come from anybody. Okay, so Life at Red is all about you know growing the culture of open sharing, uh, suggesting ideas. The the notion is we want to challenge the idea, and make the idea even better. It's in a way, it's like saying every time you have a knife that is kind of dull, you need to keep sharpening it. The only way you sharpen your knife does it become continuously sharp. Otherwise, it becomes dull. So by challenging, you, you are making the ideas sharper. So we have our uh, the Red Hat why statement. Uh, we say open unlocks the world's potential. Let me bring the world's potential back to you who are watching this uh, and participating in this webinar. Open unlocks your potential. Because what happens here is when you are able to openly share, openly uh, work together and, and without any preconceived notion of right and wrong, because there will always be somebody who's right, always be somebody who's wrong. This becomes an opportunity for you to open up your ideas and get your ideas sharpened and this way, you also bring benefit not only to yourself, to your colleagues, and also more importantly, our customers. Because at the end of the day, it's our customers who matter. The customer is where everything happens because the customer has got an issue to handle. So we must make sure the technology that they can uh, deploy is the best possible at that point in time for them to do. And what we have proven over the years is that open source is clearly the best way to do anything. Uh, in the survey we did earlier, there were some of you who says that you've never used or you don't think you have used open source software. Uh, if you have ever used uh, Google search engine, for example, that is entirely built upon open source software. In case you didn't realize that, it is built on open source software. Uh, a majority of the tools that you see today, if you have a wireless access point at home and if that's how you're, you're accessing it, the wireless access point runs open source software and so on and so on. And so there's a long list of tools that is available out there. And so what we want to make sure is the technology is available for our customers to use in the best possible way that they can use. So this slide is basically talking about all the pot potential that we have within Red Hat as a Red Hat uh, associate, how you can add value for yourself while adding value to our colleagues as well as to our customers. Now with that, I would like to now turn over to Vikram um, uh, and, and talk a little bit about open culture and the, how, what are the other things that we have available for you uh, at Red Hat. So Vikram, over to you. Tell me when. Sure, Arish, thank you very much. And uh, I, I think I loved your baking story because that kind of uh, is something many of us did during the COVID times, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Keeping exactly. ourselves busy in different ways. And uh, thanks for sharing how open source is helping being bring the innovation, right? Uh, I think it leads me perfectly to my uh, messaging that I had. So maybe if you can go to the next slide, I would just like to reflect and say that uh, today we are, you know, in a world where there is a lot of innovation happening and we are in exciting times. I mean, I see that, you know, innovation is happening in all the industries and things that we couldn't even dream uh, many years ago, we are actually living them. So I think uh, Technology, open source, open communities, and examples you gave, Harish, are all the things that are making this possible. And the good thing it is, it is happening in all the industries, be it uh, FSI, telco, manufacturing, government. Uh, there is a lot of innovation happening everywhere. And this business innovation is super critical. But then the key thing is, how is this possible? It is happening because of several reasons, but one of the key reasons is digital transformation. And I just wanted to make that point on this slide to say digital transformation is driving business innovation in almost all the industries. And if you go to the next slide, uh, we will see that what is super important in business transformation is 
digital transformation and it should be done with speed. And the reason I say that is because uh, every organization wants to be competitive in this competitive world and speed is of the essence. Otherwise, it's difficult to sustain in today's time. Organizations, small or big, are surviving and thriving because of speed and digital transformation. But of course, to make this happen, if we go to the next slide, you will see it's all about skilled people. At the end of the day, it's people. Technology is just one part of it, right? But it's the people who will be adopting the technologies as well as the processes to drive business transformation through digital transformation, right? So if I want to summarize my first three slides, I would say business innovation is everywhere. Digital transformation is driving it. We need to do it with speed. We need to take help of processes and technology, but people are the biggest reason why this is being made possible. But this is not my own hypothesis. I mean, if you go to the next slide, you will see that I'm backing this up with some data. If you go on LinkedIn today and look for open source jobs in Singapore, you will see that there is a lot of openings there. 12,000 jobs are open for cloud, 7,000 on Linux, several on Kubernetes, several on DevOps. It just shows that, you know, there is a huge demand and there is lack of supply. And of course, you can also go to redhat.com slash jobs for current opportunities in Red Hat. So bottom line is that there's a need and there's a gap. And the good news is the next slide will show to you that these are high paying jobs. High paying jobs, these are of course figures that are provided in US dollars because these job openings are in US. But you will see that many research organizations have done this study and are saying that there are job openings, high paying jobs, and there are varied roles. And why there are varied roles? In the next slide, you will see that roles keep evolving. Why they keep evolving? Because technology keeps evolving. We see new releases, we see new products, new versions. Hence, the skills and know-how constantly changes, and hence, skills transformation is needed. And skills transformation is a continuous need. You know, many years ago, when I was actually working for the government of Singapore, uh, there was a minister who used to say, in Singapore, learning is lifelong. So lifelong learning and learning is cradle to grave. And I still remember that because that is so true. Skills transformation is constantly needed because technology is evolving, processes are evolving, and we need to be part of this system to bring in the digital transformation, take it to business transformation and do the innovation that is needed. And we are all living this at home, at work and in life. So this, these are fantastic changes that are coming in. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And uh, what now, now let's talk about us, right? Uh, we heard all this story about the need for skills, the gaps, high paying jobs, but the key thing is, let's apply this to ourselves. We will be hired if we have the ability. And we need to constantly innovate and we need to constantly invest in ourselves. And today's employers are looking for skills around cloud native, IoT. Harish mentioned AI ML before, right? And innovation culture. And all these are powered by Linux, containers, Kubernetes, DevOps, these are all the various different technologies that are helping bring this innovation. I mean, the good thing is in the earlier poll that we did, you spoke about which roles you are interested in, which technologies, how many years you have worked. But I think you must have heard all these jargons. But the key thing is these are all not just fact, these are real. And Linux, containers, Kubernetes are driving and bringing this change. So let's all be aware of this. And as I showed you in the previous slides, LinkedIn is having these openings, not just in Singapore, but everywhere. So we can bring this change, right? Let's go to the next slide. And what it shows is that, you know, if we want to increase 
our value in the job. If we want to embrace an agile mind, we need to basically turbocharge ourselves and our skills around cloud native. That is becoming more and more the default requirement in this space. And that is because the next slide will show that over 94% of companies surveyed are saying that they have some form of cloud adoption. So obviously, if there is a huge cloud adoption, skills are needed. And if skills are needed, we all need to make sure that we are bringing that skills on the table for our employers. Because as I said, 94% are saying they're using some form of cloud. The interesting thing is 91% are using public cloud, but 72% also are using private cloud. So it is super duper important that we groom ourselves, challenge ourselves, sharpen our saw, and get into this open space world because this is the requirement of today and the future. So let's go to the next slide. And as I said earlier, it is all about bringing ourselves into the open source world because that is driving all the innovation and all the technologies of the future. And as we learn this thing, we will realize it's not just that we are learning the technology, but we hear a lot about agile methodology, the approaches. It will help us develop us and our culture of innovation and of course, a lot of processes. So more and more, it is becoming a little gray line between IT versus the rest because everything is becoming blended and we need to learn people, process, and technology. Yeah. Uh, moving to the next slide. This is one thing that we strongly propose that we all need to choose. There are many options available. We need to make our choices. And once we make our choice, we need to then assess ourselves we need to train ourselves and then we need to certify and certification will help us to validate our learning right uh, if we know driving doesn't mean we can get on the road and we can drive the car we need a license why is the license required because it shows that we have passed the test we are confident but the whole ecosystem is confident that we can drive the car effectively and we will not cause damage to ourselves or to anybody else so the license is nothing but a certification. Similarly, when we are using technology in real life, we need to make sure that we have the know-how, which is what we will learn, but we also need to get certification and validate our learning. So assess, train, validate is a very important cycle we need to go through. And the good thing is Red Hat has got several skills path to choose based on what you want to accomplish, which career path you are selecting. And that's how we recommend progress to be made. Uh, let's move to the next slide. Again, we spoke about open source. This slide is talking about why open source is so critical and why is it so relevant? You will see that over 90% of the Fortune 500 com companies, right, are using Red Hat products. In fact, I would say 100% of the top 100 Singapore companies are surely using open source in some form, right? And we are seeing that more and more managers talk about faster job readiness coming if people are trained prior to joining. And they continue to say that they are not finding skills in the market, which means we have a great opportunity to be ahead, learn, be prepared, take up the challenge, and we will find great jobs if we have these relevant skills in open source because open source is touching almost every big company in every big sector that we can find. So this is very, very relevant. Let's go to the next slide. And I just want to make a simple point here that whether we talk about OpenShift or DevOps or RHEL or automation, whichever technology we talk about, Red Hat and its clients have clearly shown that there's a huge productivity gain or an impact that these trained and certified resources bring to the organization. Once again, I am just bringing several different angles and research uh, statistics to you so that we all understand that this is not just uh, one person saying it, 
but multiple employers, students, research bodies are talking about this and they have measured the success. So let's be part of this system and make a difference for the future. Yeah, moving to the next slide. We spoke about training. And I said after that, validation is very important. So I just wanted to say Red Hat provides multiple levels of certification. We have certification for administrators. We have cert certification at a specialist level, at an expert level, architect. So we have administrator, engineer, architect, different levels of certification that helps you strengthen your case and be ready for the market. And the next slide will show you a Red Hat certified system administrator obviously gets a high salary compared to a, just a trained resource because you have proven and Red Hat certification programs are very highly recognized in the market because they are performance based. They are based on real life scenario and with real case studies from our clients. So it provides you with an edge. And the next slide will show an RHCE, obviously is tagged at a little more higher price because it is one additional exam beyond the RHCSA. So you will be much ahead in the race when you have these certification programs because you have open source skills and you have proven in the exams through real life case studies and these exams are proctored. So there is no question of anybody just passing without learning. That gives a reinforcement to the employers that these are skills that are sought for and these are job ready professionals. And that's super duper important in today's world. Every company, every government is talking about job ready professionals with real skills. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And uh, one thing I wanted to share here is that Red Hat is also giving back to the community. I mean, Harish earlier brought about, you know, Open is all about uh, bringing that innovation together right? And also contributing. So this is Red Hat's contribution. We have free technical overviews, which are available up to 28 hours on various different topics. So feel free to reach out and take a look at these technical overviews. We also have a Red Hat learning community on the extreme right that I'm showing. There are 100,000 professionals there. And we see that all these professionals are talking to each other. This is like a real form of peer-to-peer -peer learning, right? Uh, we also have five premier platforms, you know, who are providing free training and Red Hat is available there. So these are all various different offerings that are available to you to get started in the open source world. Let's go to the next slide, which is talking about the RHLC, which is the Red Hat learning community, which I just mentioned. It is a, it is a, form of peer-to-peer -peer learning where people ask questions, clarify, get mentors, become a mentor. So a huge contribution and exchange of ideas that take place. So feel free to leverage all these resources that are available to you. And uh, going to the next slide, I just, uh, this is uh, my second last slide. And I just wanted to highlight that uh, on top of providing free resources, Red Hat is definitely working with the Singapore government on several fronts to see how we can uh, contribute back and how we can also leverage the resources. And we have come up with a graduate program. And uh, this slide is talking about that. But we are also working with Singapore government and SG Tech as well as WSG to see how we work on other programs like career conversion. Uh, I do remember in the poll, career conversion and reskilling was uh, picked as one of the key uh, reasons why you are here. So I just wanted to highlight that Red Hat works with the Singapore government very actively to see how we can uh, contribute as well as leverage the resources and get the resources ready for the future. Uh, and uh, there are several funding programs that are being worked together. And again, I will encourage you to reach out to the redeye.com slash jobs. Uh, you will also find opportunities for apprenticeship, internship, as well as other job opportunities. So last slide, please, Harish. And uh, this is my last slide to again share with you that we have an academic program called Red Hat Academy or RHA. We have also got a talent network there. 
Now, in this talent network, we encourage employers to register and look for talent. We also encourage all the students from the Red Hat Academy program to register themselves. So it's a it's a like a marketplace. We get all the RHA students, we get employers, and they can interact with each other. They can find a job as well. So feel free to look at the RHA talent network and uh, reach out to us in various different ways that I have shared earlier. And uh, happy to engage with uh, you all to to see how we can you know work together and uh, contribute to the society and make open source even bigger because open source is driving innovation and we all want to be part of that. Thank you and that's all I had. Uh, and Harish, uh, I hand it uh, back to you to take the discussion forward. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. I think you have nailed uh, a lot of the key information out there, you know, in everything that we had to do in the last two and a half years, a lot of the technologies that needed to be made available, for example, in Singapore for contact tracing, trace together, and, and tools like that, um, those were all open source from GovTech because they recognize the value of making it open so that you increase the level of trust as well as the ability for uh, people to understand how the uh, tracing is being done. And so you remove, uh, you know, and, and lessen the anxiety that comes out of when you have to use a particular technology. And so it is a very powerful validation of uh, the model of open collaboration. Um, so what I would like to do now is to, um, although the slide says thank you, I'm going to uh, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and um, I would like to invite uh, my colleague um, Portia to come on screen and we will have a, a, a chat with her and uh, she is my colleague who deals with uh, talent acquisition and uh, employer branding and uh, things around that. So uh, Portia, well, good to see you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I, I like your backdrop. I think your backdrop is a lot more interesting than mine. <laughs> um, thank you so much. <laughs> so Portia, tell me, um, you know, from the fact that, you know, you, you look at uh, uh, employer branding and communication from that perspective, what are the, some of the things that you have, uh, you know, over the years, uh, especially with the, with the lockdown and all that, uh, how has any of those things changed and, or how much of that has stayed the same and even become better? Well, I think uh, for the pandemic, it has really changed the way we work as a company. I think um, not just for Red Hat, but for all of the industries that were, um, you know, going through that phase. And I would say that, you know, with, with this change, we kind of uh, listen to our associates on how they want to move forward when it comes to the future of work, right? So uh, we listen to what our associates are saying about the pandemic and how their uh, work or way of work has changed. And we kind of thought about like, okay, let's, let's make this into a proper policy. So um, I think in the past years, we were looking at, uh, you know, profiling our workers into three different buckets. So the first one would be uh, people who are fully remote. Uh, they don't need to come into the office at all. They're working full time at their own house um, in their own home office. And then there's the majority of our, uh, of our associates who are actually on a work profile that's called uh, work flex or office flex where they can work at anywhere they want. Um, they can come into the office when they need to, when they want to collaborate with their team, with their managers, or just having those usual um, water bubbler or water uh, cooler uh, sessions, right? And then if they're not comfortable in coming to the office in any particular time of the, of the day or of the week, they can definitely work, at, work from home, right? And there's only 5% of our associates um, all over the world who are assigned to an office or have to come to the office every day. So these are the things that we take into consideration when it comes to, you know, what is the best working environment for our own associates, um, making sure that they have that flexibility in choosing the best way for them to work and to contribute to the organization. Thank you, Portia. I think that's, um, you know, just for the sake of for those who are also listening on uh, Portia and I and Vikram, we use the word associate a lot uh, because we con consider each of us associates of the organization. So 
Um, that's just the terminology that we use. We feel this a lot better that way. And, uh, and I'm very thankful that we use that uh, a lot. Uh, Portia, there was an interesting um, survey that was done about Red Hat's uh, employer, uh, best place to work. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there was a, a contest or something. Could you, you know, just uh, mention that and talk about, talk, talk through that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So um, on a yearly basis, we would ask our associates what they think about working for Red Hat, right? So we talk about like, okay, what do you think about your uh, working environment? What do you think about our management? Um, your thoughts about the whole, entire, uh, the whole entire company as a whole, right? And we found out, you know, very positive, um, you know, feedback from our own associates. And this is specifically for Singapore. 94% uh, of us say that they are able to take time off of work when necessary and when it's necessary. Because I feel like our managers, um, they're very empathetic. They understand that as, as long as you reach your goal, your target, um, you have the freedom to do anything that is important to you. It's not always about work. It's all also about your personal um, experience with your family, your own um recharge days uh, that we are given uh, to the associates uh, every month, uh, not every month, but every, every quarter. quarter. <laughs> yes, every month would be very good. But uh, <laughs> currently it's only- uh, it's, it's, it's happening tomorrow. It's happening Yes, it's happening us. tomorrow. So uh, a recharge day is a day where um, all associates around the world in Red Hat can take one day off to spend the time with their loved ones or their hobbies or whatever. And we love it because, um, no one's going to follow you on your email. You're not going to come back with a whole load of emails that you haven't looked at when you're um, on leave. So that's one thing that we're looking at. Uh, another thing that we are very proud of is that 94% uh, of our associates also say that uh, I am treated as a full member here, regardless of my position. So you can be like Harisha said earlier, best idea comes from everywhere. You can be an intern. Who just join who who joins us for three four months? You can contribute your ideas, and if that idea works, then why not? We'll just take that um, and run with it, right? And um, ninety three percent of us, uh, and I think uh, Vikram has uh, shared upon this, but um, you know they're they're given trainings and development for their own careers all the time. Like we have a great uh, team that supports you know, the development of our own associates. And that's why all of this, uh, we, we were made on the best workplaces in Singapore uh, last year at number five. So that's something that we're super, super um, happy about. And to be very honest with you, right, um, with Red Hat, we're, we are a company that is very open. We, we also hold a lot of accountability as well. So to be very honest with you, Red Hat will need some time to uh, adjust, right? So uh, I think that's something that our CEO have said as well. Red Hat is not for everyone, but if you have what it takes, uh, it will be a great place to, to work for you. So um, there are four fundamental values that we hold upon um, as a Red Hatter. We have the freedom to contribute, so like I said, no matter what your job title is, you have that freedom to contribute. Secondly, you have the courage, you need to have the courage to express your thoughts and opinions, right? Because uh, we will listen to you, but you just need to have that courage to speak out. Um, we, we need your commitment to uh, see things through. Like if you have a great idea, um, you know, make it happen make it tangible or have someone around you to help it make, you know, come true and materialize. And the last but not least is the accountability. You have to be accountable to your thoughts, um, your commitment, not just to yourself, but to your colleagues and to your customers as well. So um, I think these are the four things that we um, hold on to as Red Hatters around the world. Portia, I can relate to that, you know, so much. I remember five years ago, I mean, I have 35 years experience, but five years ago when I was going to join Red Hat and all these statements were made to me, I was actually scared. I was overwhelmed. It's like, oh no, I mean, I I will now, uh, I have to be open. I have to speak about 
anything openly to everyone and everyone can talk to me openly and i was a little bit uh scared but uh, it was pretty easy seamless and very encouraging so i can relate to what you just said absolutely and what about <laughs> you harish you've been in the organization for quite some time do you see people um taking time to acclimate to to our values yeah i think the the bigger challenge that we have um and it's not uh, a negative way uh mm. the challenge is that uh, as our opportunities to bring new people uh, on board increases and we have been hiring a lot of people, um, the, the, the background of the individuals joining us are not necessarily similar to what we have. So they may come from organizations or their life experience or their work experience was very, you stay in your lane, I don't want to hear from you. I'll only hear from you when I ask you. And if I don't ask you, don't tell me anything. That kind of a, a, a way of doing stuff. And when they come and join us, it's like, oh, you mean anybody can propose anything? Yeah, you know, because good ideas come from anywhere. We have no idea where it's going to come from. And a lot of the ethos for that comes from the open source community itself, which is where Red Hat gets its roots from. So in the open source world, you have no idea where a, a wonderful you know, thing will come up from. It could be coming up from Yishun, it may be coming from Timbuktu, it may be coming from Antarctica. I have no idea. As long as they have an internet connection, they can propose an idea maybe that works so that to me is the challenge so i think the bigger issue right we have i mean red hat's perspective is that uh we need to uh rapidly bring new people joining us into this idea of openness and as Bikram mm. uh, mentioned as well it can be intimidating at the beginning because wow you mean you want to you want to listen to me oh wow mm. you know i thought i'm just the intern no i want to listen to you i want to hear your story yeah. is it what 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 do you think right mm. and i think that is a very very important thing and i hope those who are listening on this uh, and attending this session today and hearing it in a recording subsequently will recognize that, hey, no, there is a different way of doing stuff and you can be successful doing it. And Red Hat is an example of that. And I feel that's that's our uh, our magic, our X factor of Red Hat uh, mm. as almost a 30-year-old organization doing the same thing for 30 years. So this is fantastic. So let me let me then uh, pose a little question to Bikram in that case, right? Since you know you joined us five years ago and you felt, felt that there was a change that in terms of how you work. So what was your bigger uh, biggest learning, the aha moment that you had? Did you have an aha moment, or is it an ongoing aha moment? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. I mean, Harish, I've been lucky that uh, I've worked in several organizations, but. Uh, I, I have kept learning, right? And uh, as I said earlier, uh, one of the ministers had mentioned, you know, it's lifelong learning. Yeah, uh, It is absolutely lifelong learning. Uh, and we are learning from the youngsters. We are learning from our kids, right? I mean, how to use the phone. I think my son will teach me much uh, better than uh, anywhere else. So there are several aha moments. I think the open leadership is uh, something which is uh, very important because that's how we constantly promote openness and the culture of learning as well as giving back to the society because as you give back it comes back it's like your i mean if i can visualize it's like the waves right they go in and they come back strong and they go in and they come back stronger right so there are several such moments and i can think of examples like leadership examples or technology examples mm -hmm. and as i said earlier right in my first slide Innovation is happening everywhere and what was not possible a few years ago or what we were dreaming have been made real now. So I'm sure that the dreams that uh, we are seeing now and saying, no, 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 this is not possible. Someday it will be possible and open source makes this possible. That's right. Exactly. So um, is there anything uh, that, uh, Porsche, you want to talk about from your personal perspective, you know, uh, you, you, since you, you are the newest among us, <laughs> relatively speaking. Right uh, okay. right? So what was your, what was your take on that? What, what did you find uh, interesting or challenging for that matter? Well, I mean, Red Hat will probably be the only company that I have ever joined that has one one entire week dedicated to you know our culture our people and our brand right um so every year we have what we call the we are red hat week where everyone around the world just comes in and you know do things together um so recently 
um, in the office, there would be, you know, a jigsaw puzzle that everyone who comes in the, yeah. the pantry, they would, you know, take one piece and put it together. And that's how open source is about, right? That even just like a jig jigsaw piece, you need multiple people to come in to make it work at the end of the day. Um, we have so many, um, you know, activities, like, for example, a virtual uh, talent show mm, that yeah. happened uh, last year where everyone in the region are doing their um you know their dances their singing their poetry everything that we, we we we're not always talking about work about our technology or uh you know what fiscal year is you know we're, we're making you know it's it's all also that personal connection getting to know your colleagues in the other part of the world but know them as a person and not just a unit of um you know of, of the business. So if I were I to bring... Say. So that's... A, no, I was just going to say, if you bring it back to the, uh, you know, the whole purpose of a job, it's not just about getting a salary for that matter or doing something based on what, you know, you can do, but it's also there's the whole ecosystem around you that makes mm -hmm. the whole thing meaningful, right? So exactly. you, know, you, you shouldn't be... You, you should be looking forward to coming to and doing the stuff that you enjoy doing because you are mm. you're growing at the same time you are contributing and you're enjoying yourself and i think red hat to me it's is the that baseline so i mm -hmm. i honestly i can't see myself anywhere else other than red hat so i, <laughs> I told this to many people as well so it's like because there is this open culture and you know it, we we expect people to make mistakes because mm. we are human beings mm -hmm. but we also know that when you make mistakes you own up to it and fix it and move on mm. so we don't dwell on it right so yeah we will make mistakes it's a given that's just a human nature mm -hmm. um, but that's the accountability part and i think that is the freedom and the accountability to make mistakes and be accountable mm -hmm. for it and move on yes. and fix it and move on i think that is very very powerful and mm -hmm. that's exactly what you see in the open source world that's exactly when you see in open source projects you will see mistakes being done and then it's getting fixed by, by somebody or maybe the person who made a mistake and then you move on. And so mm. it's a very powerful all-round messaging from that perspective. So mm. coming back to what we are doing here today for this session, it's all about jobs and also upskilling and reskilling the people who have been uh, you know, watching us right now. And I think mm. you know the, the onus is on you. We have done our part to <laughs> tell you a story and, and uh, it back it up with facts. And so Vikram has shared a whole bunch of uh, information as well. And Portia talked about her own experience as well and uh, how uh, within Red Hat we have done you know, a bunch of things. So I think uh, what I would li like to see now is to you know, see where this moves us forward with the audience uh, in play and how we can, um, um, you know, the, the transition for those of you who are looking to transition to an open source environment for that matter, you know, what do you need to do? I think Vikram sh shared some uh, tips on uh, training that's very hard is making available. I would also highly encourage you to look at other open source communities in Singapore. If you are, in, if you are uh, actually located in Singapore, we have, uh, there's a place called the Hackerspace. Uh, look it up online, you'll find Hackerspace. There are a bunch of uh, uh, developer related uh, channels on Telegram. Uh, so Dev, Dev SG, I think it is D-E-V-S-G. Look it up and, you know, join the community. And there are plenty of meetups uh, and, and in-person meetings. And Red Hat, we organize a lot. I host a lot. Yesterday, we had one session about DevOps uh, in the evening. And there's another session happening next week about uh, 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 software security, open source software security that's happening next week. So watch out for all these announcements. Join us, come to meet other people and, 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 uh, uh, these are the avenues by which you can now start uh, starting to get involved in the open source community. It's a baby step, but it's an important step to take. And then from there, uh, opportunities will open up. Uh, I, am, I guarantee you there'll be significant opportunities every nook and corner. Uh, there isn't a place that doesn't, doesn't have it. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, I think what I'd like to do is to turn it back over to uh, Gary Ong uh, from SG Tech. Uh, to bring us home. So thank you, Portia. Thank you, Vikram. And uh, over to you, Gary. Thanks, Harish. Thanks, Vikram. And uh, thanks, Portia, as well. No, thanks to our Red Hatters team. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, this webinar is actually brought to you by in partnership with Red Hat uh, and uh, with SG Tech as well. So uh, Red Hat is actually a very valuable partner uh, with SG Tech as like what um, 
Harish and Vikram has mentioned and emphasized a lot earlier, we talked a lot about a supportive ecosystem to help you to thrive you know, in your transition to a career in the tech space. So that's exactly what Ashitech hopes to do. And uh, without ado, let me just do a quick share of my screen and just to bring you a quick through of what uh, Ashitech uh, is actually all about. Yeah, give me a moment. Okay. All right, just quick slideshow, current slide. So um, how does SG Tech helps? So I'll just do a very quick uh, uh, sharing of like what SG Tech is all about, especially for those who are not familiar with us. So basically SG Tech is essentially we're a trade association. So basically as a trade association, we advocate for uh, emerging trends. We work with different business partners, you know, we work with our government agencies, we enable business for our uh, member companies and so on and so forth. So basically we have close about 1,300 member companies ranging from uh, vibrant, innovative startups to MNCs to um, you know, uh, a very interesting SME as well. And of course, uh, being a trade associations, we have different chapters and committees to really cater you know, to the emerging uh, needs, uh, especially for the industry, you know, and to support various different strategic growth and uh, development uh, pertaining to the, in the, the technology in the industry itself, yeah. So basically, um, as SG Tech, this is our strategic focus. We have two strategic trusts. First is to position Singapore as a global hub for digital data based on trust itself. So we emphasize a lot on digital trust, especially when digital transformation is what most people will be, most company and uh, most people will be looking uh, towards too. And of, of course, at the same time, uh, you know, to lead the tech sector to take a, a collective action, you know, uh, and of course, to be part of solutions to uh, Singapore and global sustainability. And all these two strategic trusts is underpinned by, you know, um, talent for tech, which is essentially why we are here today to talk about tech talent, right? So basically, this is our vision, our mission. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, this is what SG Tech uh, looks and value about, yeah. So just to keep a quick, give a very quick uh, snapshot about uh, the tech companies who are our members. So these are our 1,000 plus open uh, tech companies. I can't possibly put all uh, our logos here because that would like maybe show another 10 over different style of pages, right? So you can see Red Hat is definitely one of our value companies as well uh, under uh, the, the trade association. Yeah. So just to share a bit of the organization structure so you can really have a bit of understanding why we are doing what we are doing right now. So basically we have our board of governance to give us our strategy, you know, to, to lead us, you know, to, to provide a governance uh, outline. And then uh, it's actually very much supported by three steering committees, which are I'm actually in one of them. We are the secretary supporting one of the steering committee, which is tech talent. And then um, cascading down from the steering committees, then you have the various different chapters that looks after different, different areas. As you can see, you have our AI, digital transformation, smart nation, uh, education tech, game committee, digital trust, data centers, and so on and so forth. So we have a lot of wonderful people, uh, people like from, even from Red Hat and people from like you know, Meta, Google, who has volunteered their time to take on uh, you know, various different positions within Ashitech to lead us, to guide us, and to help us to move towards a different, uh, advocate for different kind of things as well within the organization. So as you can see, these are board of governance. I shall not go too much into that, right? These are council members uh, from uh, coming from different walks of life, different companies as well, given, the, given their time and of course the expertise to help the organization, help the trade association and by, by that, you know, to actually help Singapore and our various different member companies to move to where they are supposed to be, yeah. And steering committees and so on and so forth, yeah. So what I really want to really emphasize on is with the help of all these companies, um, and the committee members and the leadership of our, our council members and our board of governance, we have a series of um, um, so-called uh, uh, programs that are here to really help Singapore, Singaporeans to actually transit into a career in tech. 
So essentially, we classified them under this thing called the talent series, right? So out of the talent series itself, we have essentially six different kinds of programs. One is a talent support program. So talent support program is essentially a seven weeks program that has a very high touch kind of uh, uh, methodology whereby we assign mentors and coaches uh, with our particip participants to really let them understand a little bit more about themselves. You know, what are they looking out for in a career? What are their strengths? What are their abilities, weaknesses, and how to do work among that? And then they'll be assigned to different mentors and coaches to really guide them through. At the same time, hoping to help them to maximize their job search results. And that's one of the things. And essentially, um, we don't really um accept every one who actually registered for a talent support program because as it says right it requires a bit of commitment and all that so it's really for people who, who potentially has been out of job for a period of time and who needs a little bit more hand holding a little bit more guidance from our respective mentors who are actually uh, you know, coaches and all that so essentially that's what talent support is all about of course uh other than that for anybody who just want to have a very quick you know um uh, uh, assistance in like maybe just a quick review of their resumes, you know, understand a bit more on like, you know, uh, pitching the elevator pitch and all that, you know, uh, helping uh, to craft their interview skills a little bit more, just to enhance a little bit more on the job search result. We do have our various uh, talent success workshop. Do look out on our website uh, or even sign up our mailing list. We have all that. You can actually just come in and all these are just uh, uh, complimentary. You don't need to really, um, you know, uh, pay anything for it. And uh, of course, the last thing, uh, the third thing is the talent match. There's a lot of like speed interviews, there's a lot of career fair. In fact, we have one coming on the 14th of September uh, happening at Devon Institute with different companies coming up to, uh, to offer job opportunities. That's what talent match is all about. And then talent advisory. Talent advisory is a lot like what uh, Red Hat is currently doing right now, you know, to really let like, you understand what open source is all about, uh, you know, to kind of like demystify certain understanding of certain technology itself. So we have done a lot of things like in the area of cybersecurity, AI, with different subject matter experts, you know, similar to like what Red Hat is doing, to really let you understand uh, what is all this technology all about. And also, essentially, we tie in back to the job roles that actually come along with all this uh, technology. And also, most importantly, to really let you understand what are the kind of skills that comes with all these things, all these different kind of job roles, right? Yeah. And then uh, we do have our tech talent portal. It's essentially a digital job portal. You can actually take a look at it and see what are the kind of tech opportunities and tech like job opportunities that's out there by our different member companies. And last but not least, which is something that I would like to emphasize a little bit more today, since our topic is really uh, in collaboration with Red Hat, is our career conversion program. I think Vikram has mentioned a little bit earlier just now as well about career conversion program. So, um, yeah. So that's, uh, we, we do have a career conversion programs that we actually have it in partnership with Red Hat, right? So of all these initiatives that we have, right, uh, for the past one, two years, we have placed about 500, um, you know, uh, career switches. And out of these 500 career switches, we have about, you know, 47% of them who are like matured uh, 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 professionals. Matured by that, I, I mean that they are actually uh, uh, slightly more than 40 years old and there. Right. And we've, we have uh, an ecosystem of about 400 different companies and hires who come on board to offer such uh, job opportunities to our PMEs in this sense. So I will just dive a little bit more into uh, the career conversion program that we had in partnership with Red Hat. I think this one, uh, Rikram has mentioned a little bit earlier about how more than 90% of the Fortune 500 companies uses Red Hat products and solution, which I will not uh, uh, go, go deep into that because uh, I think uh, Red Hat has actually explained really, really well. And uh, these are the job roles that are supported under the conversion uh, career conversion program with Red Hat. So we have technical engineer, IT consultant, solution architect, right? And then these are the various different responsibilities in terms of the different roles that we have uh, for the these two job roles. And then we have the application development consultant and the DOC consultant. And these are the various different responsibility that comes with this particular job role itself. Essentially, what is really a conversion, career conversion program? I think for a career conversion program, as what the name uh, mentioned, is really, really to help, uh, you know, uh, to target at uh, mid-career uh, switches who are looking to move from a total different industry or a total different job role to another one through a very structured training program with on-the-job training uh, 
uh, assigned, uh, and also uh, prior to that, they will have to be actually being employed uh, by a company. So, uh, and the company will then put them through this six months of structured training, on the job training, uh, partnering uh, SG Tech and uh, Red Hat for that matter. Yeah, so that's essentially what is a career conversion program all about. And then uh, at the end of it, all the objective is really to ensure that they achieve the kind of skills and the competency that is required to really perform the role they're actually being employed as, yeah. So, yeah, to end it off, right, uh, just want to give you some, uh, you know, understanding of the media profile of how Tech and together with our different partners, uh, like Red Hat and of course, uh, uh, other member companies has actually essentially help uh, uh, mid-career transitionals to really successful transit to a job uh, in the tech space. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you have any more questions and if you'd like to connect with us, uh, you can scan a QR code and or indicate your interest uh, in some of the things that we do, or just simply reach out to us by email. You know, uh, so so and we can actually just keep you in the loop for all the things that SGTEC will be doing uh, together with our partners. Yeah. So I shall stop my sharing here. And if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to take them. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you have a question for our Red Hat uh, team, I'll also be happy to take that as well. Okay, seems like we do not have any questions. Okay. Yeah, there's no questions then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, if there's no further question, I guess uh, Vikram, Harish, uh, Porsche, perhaps we can end the webinar session today. Thank you. Yeah. yeah okay. so yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I'll hand it back over to the uh, skills future team in this case. Thanks everyone and good luck. Thank you, Vikram and Harish. We hope that you have taken away some pointers and insights from this webinar. If you need guidance on your tech upskilling journey, you can sign up for the free one-to-one -one skills and training advisory session with SSG's skills ambassadors. They will have a conversation with you to understand your needs and objectives. It could be a new skill you're looking for to enhance your employment prospects or for your career transition plans and share with you the relevant information. These include cost search and recommendations, types of assistance schemes and funding, skills future credit, and other resources on My Skills Future portal. There are three ways to find or contact a skills ambassador. Visit us at any of the locations indicated on the map, but please take note of the operating days and time. They will provide you with suitable course recommendations based on your career goals. Simply scan the QR code or click on the link in the chat to register and they will reach out to you within three to four working days. We have now come to the end of our session. We would appreciate if you could take a minute to fill in the feedback form by scanning the QR code. Once again, thank you for taking time to join us in our webinar. Do check out the upcoming webinars on our SkillsFuture Festival website. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.